Welcome to LearnExchange.com. In this video series, we are going to be installing the 32-bit version of Exchange 2007. Now, the first thing you need to know is the 32-bit version of Exchange 2007 is not designed for production use. It's designed for testing and evaluation usage. In fact, if you put it in production and have any trouble with it, Microsoft will not be able to support you on it because they their 64-bit version is where they focus the majority of their efforts and where they expect customers who are deploying Exchange 2007 to put in production with. Now, why have they even given us a 32-bit version? Well, a lot of organizations, their testing platforms may not be able, may not have 64-bit processors. Uh, you may not, you may be able, or you may be wanting to do the testing in a virtual environment using virtual uh, server 2005 or using uh, VMware or one of those type products. So yes, you can utilize it, you can test it out, but do not plan on putting your 32-bit version in production. If you're going to be putting in production, you're going to want to be building new servers, uh, you know, fresh installs, all of that with the 64-bit operating system, such as Windows Server 2003 64-bit, and you're going to want to be installing the Exchange 2007 64-bit version. But if you're like me, you need a test environment, so we're going to be loading up the 32-bit version today. Well, you can obtain the 32-bit version in evaluation form from Microsoft's website or through your Microsoft uh, appropriate Microsoft channels for media. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and put in my Exchange 2007 CD-ROM. I've got that in my computer. And I'm going to go ahead and double-click it. You might have had the auto run automatically load up for you. Now, the first option is we've got plan, and they've got a document here on reading all about Exchange Server 2007. Well, I'm figured you've probably already read that before, or you're going to watch my video series, and then you can go back and review that document. Either one of those, you do want to make sure you review that document before you complete your production installation. Now, underneath the install section, we see that step one is already complete, install.NET Framework 2.0. Well, that's because that's I've performed a Windows update on this server and made sure that I have all the current components. Uh, these days, the .NET Framework is part of the Windows update. You can go ahead and make sure you select it and install it up on your machines. In fact, you want to make sure that the server you're about to install Exchange 2007 on is patched up to the current levels. You really don't want an unpatched machine to load up Exchange 2007. In fact, we're going to find there's a few extra patches we have to put on specifically for Exchange 2007 32-bit edition. Next one, step two. We don't need to do step two to install the Microsoft Management Console because that's installed by default on a Windows Server 2003 machine. What we do need to load is Microsoft Windows PowerShell, their new scripting language, which is essentially replacing VBScript as Microsoft scripting language, sort of a hybrid between VBScript, Perl, and a few other, uh, and a command line interface. So let's go ahead and if we click on this link, it will actually take us to a website. You can see that over on the left, it'll click on, it'll take you to Microsoft's website and allow you to download the uh, Windows PowerShell components. I've actually already downloaded those, so over here on my C drive, I've made a directory called Updates, and what you need to load is what's called KB926139. And what this has in it is this has Microsoft PowerShell. So I'm going to go ahead and complete the installation of this by agreeing to the license, after I review it of course, allow PowerShell to install, and then we'll go back to the next step of the setup. It won't take this very long at all. Alright, so PowerShell has now been installed, so we'll click finish. Let's return back to the setup, and you'll notice this uh, wizard here is dynamic. It's figured out that we now have PowerShell installed. So let's go ahead and tell it we want to install Microsoft Exchange. So now it's going to do the initialization of the setup, where it's going to detect some components on your system, make sure you have the pieces you need. Now, a couple things. If you're used to Exchange 2003, we are going to need to go back and install IIS. But we are not going to have to go back and install SMTP and NNTP. And so keep an eye on this interface. We're actually going to run this setup a couple times because the first time we run it, we're going to find we're missing some components. That's why you're watching the pre-installation video. So we'll go ahead and click Next. We'll agree to the licensing. 
after reviewing it, of course. Now, you'll notice back up here, it did specifically say we're running the Exchange Server 2003 32-bit edition. And what about the 32-bit edition? It's not for production use. So we're going to click Next. Now, here we're being prompted, would we like to participate in Microsoft's error reporting? I'm going to specify no at this point. I don't want it to send errors directly to Microsoft when they happen on my system. So we'll go ahead and click Next. Now, one of the new things about Exchange 2007 is the idea of building an Exchange server with a specific role or roles on it. For example, Microsoft sees the typical Exchange server installation as being a hub transport role, so to provide transportation of mail, a client access ser server, one where clients can access the server for their mailbox, so through like Outlook Web Access, a mailbox server role, one that's actually housing mailboxes, and one with the management tools loaded. But you'll notice here there's also a custom option where you could actually choose to just be one or two or just a few of those components, not to be all of them. And we also see there's another one here, Edge Transport, which is designed to put out in the borders, out near demilitarized zone. And one called Unified Messaging. Now we'll get to some of these in some of the more advanced videos as we uh, build the content up here at LearnExchange.com, specific to Exchange 2007. So let's go ahead and choose the typical, and it's going to put the software into the C colon program files Microsoft Exchange Server folder to start. We'll go ahead and click Next. Now I'm doing a brand new installation. You'll notice it didn't even ask me are you going to be coexisting or are you going to be building a new one because it's queried my Active Directory to find out do I already have Exchange installed. I don't. So I'm going to call this Exchange Org. We're going to call this, actually let's call this the Learn Exchange Exchange Org. And we'll click Next. Now, here's a interesting question it's asked you. Are you planning on having Outlook 2003 or earlier clients connect? If you are, those clients require a public folder database. If you are only going to be deploying Outlook 2007 clients, you don't need a public folder database anymore. In fact, Microsoft is pretty much moving away from those. Future versions of Exchange, there's no guarantee they'll even have the thing, I think, called the public folder database. Well, we're going to assume that it's a little early to be abandoning Outlook 2003 completely. You know, unless you've already completed your Office 2007 migration, chances are you're going to have people with Outlook 2003 or earlier clients hit it. So we're going to say yes. And that just says it's going to build us a public folder database. What happens if you choose the wrong option here? Not a big deal. What you'll be able to do is you'll be able to uh, add the public folder database at a later time. But we're going to go ahead and choose yes and then click next. And now it's going to do an analysis of our system to find out if there is any new components. You see it just did an internet check. Now it's doing some testing on my machine to find out is my system appropriate for running Exchange 2007. And we see right off the bat this computer requires an update. The 32-bit version of Exchange is not supported for production use. Okay, they're telling me that. They're telling me here that I need to get this update from the link ID 74469 and they're also telling me the installation of inform Internet Information Services Common Files is not installed because we're going to need that. So we're going to need to install that component. And specifically it wants to see the World Wide Web service installed. It wants that update and they're warning us again that it doesn't have, that this is not a production version. Okay, so looks like we need to do a few things. We need to install IIS and we need to go ahead and load this update. Well, Let's go ahead and do that right now. And that's in the next part of the video series.